All right. Here's our video today. Inertia and momentum. Now, we could just do nothing today. Right? We could just... I cannot even talk in this in this video. And that kind of relates to inertia. Because inertia really is the tendency to do nothing. Just idling away. Staring at the walls. But in physics, when we're talking about physics, though, inertia opposes change. Right? So if you're in motion with inertia, you don't want to stop. And if you're stopped, you don't want to move. So that's, in a way, inertia. It's the resistance to change. So we'll talk about inertia in this video. We'll do something. And momentum, sometimes they're confused. Sometimes people use them interchangeably. But momentum is, if an object is moving, it has momentum. And you may think of sports teams. Sometimes you say, the announcer might say, well, they're gathering momentum. So we'll talk about inertia and momentum. Let's talk about inertia first. Let's get a clean page. Oh, we can just write it up here. Let me... Let's use, we'll stay with red. So if we're talking about inertia up here, again, with inertia, right, it is an object. We'll just use an object, some object. Who knows what it is? An object's resistance, resistance to change. An object's resistance to change. So an object, an object, right here again, an object wants to stay at rest or continue moving. So it's if it's moving, it wants to continue to move. If it's at rest, it wants to stay at rest. So if you have a ball, let's say here's a ball, and the ball keeps moving. The ball is going to keep moving unless some force stops it. Sometimes it's friction. Now in space, if you throw a ball in space, it's going to continue to move because there's no friction. So a force has to stop it from moving, and a force has to make it move. And now we can include Newton's law. So let's write, make sure our pen's working. Stay with red. So when we say Newton's law, his first law of motion, and you've probably heard this, and I'll write it. An object. I should put a dot there instead of that, right? An object at rest will remain at rest, right? Unless, right? Here's the key. Unless acted upon. Acted on by an unbalanced force. In other words, a force that has greater force, right? So if here's a ball. And if I draw a foot here, right? Here's another foot, who knows? So if this person kicks this ball, there's the force. It's gonna make the ball move. So it's going to stay at rest unless a force acts upon it. Also, part of the first law is the vice versa. So, but or an object in motion. Keep putting that. Keep forgetting that dot there. An object in motion. Don't tell the ELA teacher. An object in motion will continue.
unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So in other words, here's the ball moving, the ball's continuing to move, unless, of course, there's something there, like a net. And if that's a net, the ball's going to go into the net, and it may bounce back a little bit, and, of course, friction on Earth will stop it eventually. So that's for Newton's first law of motion. Well, let me clear that out. Okay. Leave it up there for a few minutes if you want to write it down. Remember one thing also is the greater the mass, the greater the inertia. And I'll explain that. So inertia is dependent on mass. And mass, write that down, we'll clear it out here. So the greater the uh, mass, the greater the inertia. Inertia, spell that right. So the greater the mass, the greater the inertia. And it makes sense. So if you think about it, let's say we had this giant boulder or whatever this thing was, right? And it weighed, say it weighed 1,000 kilograms. It weighed a lot, right? And you're sitting here pushing against it. Let's say that's somebody pushing against it. They're trying, trying to smiling when they're doing it. Who knows what's happening here? Trying to should go back to art school, right? So here's this perfectly made figure pushing, straining to push this 1,000 kilogram object. So that it has greater mass. It's going to take more inertia to move it. It's going to take more inertia to make it, you know, stop resisting its ability to stay in one place. Same end, if you had a, you know, small rock that weighed, let's say, five kilograms, it'll be easier to move that. So that has less inertia. So again, the greater the mass, the greater the inertia, the harder it is to resist the change. That boulder is not going to move unless you put really more force involved. So you need more inertia. So that's common sense in a way. So let's write this down over here. Inertia depends on mass. So think of this in simpler terms, right? The heavier something is, it's easier to push a toy car, a matchbox car, than it is to push a real car. It's common sense. The car, the real car, has more inertia. It's going to resist change more than the matchbox car. So inertia depends on mass. Now let's talk about momentum. Let's clear that out. Let's make a attempt to make, you saw my drawing skills, let's attempt to make some truck. All right, here's a truck delivering something interesting, maybe. Maybe bananas. Anyway, so here's the truck. And let's say over here is a ball, a little tiny ball. So which one has more inertia? Well, the truck has more inertia because it has more mass. So we say more mass, more inertia. It's easier to kick that ball. It's easier to have that ball moving than to push that truck by yourself, right? More mass, more inertia. One thing you know is if the truck is not moving, what do you notice? If the truck is not moving, it has no momentum. It's not moving, so it has no momentum. So, but if the ball's moving, then the ball has momentum. 
You can think of inertia or momentum. That's right, momentum. As movement. Or inertia in motion. All right, let's clear that out. Let's change the color background. All right, let's get a little, little bright red going on here. And we'll use white. So the formula for momentum is going to be this. It's going to be P equals MV. So P is momentum. If you're wondering why they used the P, scientists a long time ago decided on the P, German scientists. And the M is mass, because they couldn't use M, right? They had mass. And V, what do you think V is? Velocity. Speed with direction. So that's the formula for momentum. Let's look at an example of that. And so let's say we have a box here. Who knows what it is? And we're saying it's 30 kilograms. So remember, mass is measured in kilograms. And if you're wondering, it's about it's about 66 pounds. And we want to, and when we're pushing this box, the minute we push this, we add a force to this box, and the box moves. When the box moves, it's gathering momentum because it's moving. So depending on how much force we use, because remember, with inertia, the box wants to resist change. It doesn't want to move. But if you make it move, it's gathering momentum. And velocity, by the way, is measured in meters per second. That slash means per second. So if we're moving this, and let's say it's now moving, it's now moving is our arrow, and it's moving two meters, what's that line for again? Per second. So just look at the formula. What do you think the momentum is? Don't use pounds now. Use the kilograms, because that's what we use in science. So 30 times 2 is 60. Now, for momentum, you're going to use, it's going to be 60 kilograms meters per second. That'll be its momentum. And it's important to know, let's put a little line here, that what I showed you here is linear momentum. Linear means straight, straight line. You know, you, when you do linear equations, you have a straight line. So this is linear. There's also angular momentum. So this is linear momentum. And in other videos, I'll talk about angular momentum. And that deals with an object going around an axis. So for example, if you had a circle and it was moving, that would be angular momentum. Like the Earth, Earth going around the sun is angular momentum. We'll talk about that in other videos. All right, that's our video today.